All right, good morning. Also, good morning to the virtual world. Um, today is uh, July the 17th. In our adult unit, uh, our lesson will be coming from, it says, our adult unit two, the word of the agent of creation. <clears throat> In our adult general lesson title is the word saves. And our adult topic is bringing the light. Lesson seven. Um, and our background scriptures come from John 12, um, verses 27 through 50. And also our print passage is from John 12, 47 through 50. All right. Let us pray. Father God, I come before you once more again, God. Just thank you right now, God, for a day that we haven't seen before. And Father God, as we go, Father God, into our Sunday school right now, God, God, we ask you right now, God, just to give us the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding, Father God, to hear, Father God, what you're trying to tell your people, God. God, Father God, just right now, God, just ask you right now, God, just to be over me, Father God. Move Jimmy out of himself, Father God, but just allow me to do the things that you have me to do, Father God. Somewhere may say that they want to know you, God. <clears throat> do our lesson, God, ask you, Father God, to be with the action portion of our congregation, Father God. Be with the ones that are making their way out to Sunday school, Lord God. And God, as we get ready to go, Father God, into our Sunday service right now, God, ask you, Father God, just to put a protective hedge around our pastor, Father God, as he travel, Father God, this way, God, continue to give him the vision, Father God, to lead us, Father God, in the way that we have to go. These are all the blessings I ask in your holy son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, like I said before, you know, um, a couple of Sundays ago, I'm not really a singer, but I'm going to do my best to uh, sing a little bit of our uh, song. And um, it's from our celebration hymn. It says, we have heard the joyful sound. It goes like this. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tide is all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steep and cross the way. On with till our Lord command, Jesus says, Jesus says, waited on a rolling tide, Jesus says, Jesus says, tell the sinners far and wide, Jesus says, Jesus says, sing the isle in other seas, echo back your ocean cave. Earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout it brightly through the gloom. When the heart mercy craves. Sing the triumphs of the tomb. Jesus says, Jesus says, Hear the winds a mighty voice. Jesus says, Jesus says, Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus says, Jesus says, Shout salvation full and free. Highest hill and deepest cave. This is our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. Now we're going to our declaration. And it will be coming from John chapter 12, verses 44 through 50. Can I have anybody that want to volunteer and read those, read the, um, the declaration for us? the world the one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge on the last day that i have spoken will serve as judge for i have not spoken on my own but the father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak and i know that his commandment is eternal life what I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. Thank you, Sister Caroline. 
And those are mighty words right there at the end. He says, and I know that his commandments is eternal life. That's enough for us to give God praise for right now. And it says, what I speak, therefore I speak just as the Father has told me. So that's Jesus speaking. And he's saying that the words that he speak, he's speaking those from his Father. That, that's not him. That's coming from the words of God. All right. So our affirmation says we share, we will share with others the opportunity to come into the light. All right. It says most people acknowledge a sense of a higher spiritual power that exceeds our human capabilities. How do we understand the mysteries of the universe and the world and our lives? That's one question. And it says Jesus' mission is to save the world so that the world can live in an eternal relationship with our Father, the Creator. All right, and it talks about doing the lesson. It says, have a general discussion with um, the class about what it means to have a worldview and a philosophy of, of life. All right, and we're going to start to tackle that first question. It says, how do we understand the mysteries of the universe and the world and our lives? And um, it says, Jesus' mission is to save the world so that the world can live in an eternal relationship with our Father, the Creator. All right. So how do we understand the mysteries of this world? And while y'all thinking about that, I'm just going to, you know, the, the mysteries of the world, I think we went out to uh, see a movie. Uh, my family had come from a friend, but we went out to see a movie not too long ago, and we saw two double rainbows. And I don't know if the, if the class have ever seen two double rainbows, but that was my first time seeing two double rainbows, you know, um, in life. It's not nothing rare, but it's sort of rare. Like I said, I'm 51. That's my first time ever seeing two double rainbows like that. So, you know, we marvel at that thing, you know, like, man, you know, God is so powerful. He, he made two rainbows, you know, and that's a mystery to me because, like I said, I'm 51 years old. That's my first time seeing that. I've been all over the world, in the military, seeing different things throughout my life, but that was my first time seeing a double rainbow. So that's a mystery to me, how God can make things like that happen um, in this universe and in this world. You know, and that shows me that God is so powerful. You know, a, a, a lot of times, you know, I think the lesson talks about the word saves, but you know, that's just one mystery that I've seen. You know, 51 years, never seen a double rainbow, just seen it the other day. You know, just seeing the, the 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 power of God and how He how He does things. All right. The question also goes down and says Jesus' mission is to save the world so that the world can live in an eternal relationship with our Father, the Creator. You know, during reading John this week, you know, God did come. He came to save us, not to judge, not to judge us. You know, um, and a lot of times I, I feel like we get caught up in sometimes judging ourselves or judging other people where we can't um, be that image that we were created in. You know, we were born in, in God's image and I ask people, I say, you know, I've asked some people this week. So when you hear that we were born in, in, in God's image, what do you feel like the, the word was talking about? Some people feel like because of he made us man, you know, Jesus came down here, but I feel like this is just my personal opinion. This is Jimmy. I feel like God, he blew his spirit into all of us. Because Sometimes we get so used to want to dress up our outer appearance to make it look good. You know, uh, whether it's hair, whether, you know, some of the women going on right now, they're putting on these eyelashes, you know, wigs, even the men too. You, you got these little things, these body shapers that we, we got going on now. We're trying to fix up our outer appearance. We really, we need to be working on our, in, our inner appearance. You know, what God really sees. Because when we, when we leave this world, you know, the body's going to be in the ground. And that spirit goes back to God. So, you know, that, that's just in the word. And, you know, that's just my, my philosophy of it. The image that God created us in his image to be like him, to be a light for him. All right. Anybody else got anything else they want to add to that before we move on? Okay. Another question says, um, what it means to have a world with philosophy of life. All right. It says state whether they think the person sense of meaning or purpose. All right. 
talk to me about purpose. Does anybody know what their purpose is? We're right here on page 32 in the middle section of Engage. Uh, anybody know what their purpose? What's their purpose? And after researching that, myself, you know, I know everybody sort of heard of a book that's called A Pur Purpose Driven Life. And it was written by Rick Warren, and he was a minister, and he talked about worship. He talked about unselfish fellowship, spiritual maturity, and, and ministry. All right, uh, our purpose. I want you, while y'all sit here, I just want you to think about over the course of your life, why God had you here, or what was your purpose? for being here. Why did you do some of the things you did? You know, because what I want to look at is, yes, got you. Get you the mic, just take a heat. I know you're nervous, but I don't want you to heat. Okay, I'm standing here, right. can I do that? God has been blessing you. And Ms. Carolyn Short said that, you know, in life, she was used to going out visiting people before she went through her own illness. But through her illness, she saw how God had blessed her with certain people that's been there for her to do the same things. It's almost like sowing a seed. You know, and she's reaping what she's sown through her hard work. You know, God has allowed people to be there for her by her doing the things and doing the things that God wanted her to do. Yes, ma'am. When I used to feel so bad at my worship, all I knew was small children. She didn't never tell me no anything. She would always tell me. Mm. Every time I needed her, she would be right there. Mm. Y'all, just all you know, that was my purpose. Mm. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes
no matter our financial situation. We supposed to be the image, we supposed to represent the image of God. Oh yes. And it talks about my lesson about the word being able to the the say just her words right now. You never know how that might have touched her sister's heart just to hear that. Oh yes. Yes. Because sometimes we 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 take things for granted. Yes, we do. You know, <clears throat> in this statement right here where it says uh Ask them to state whether they think every person has a sense of meaning or purpose of her or his life and their relationship to every other person, plant, animal, and the world at large. I think I wouldn't uh, state this as a purpose. It, it might be a purpose, but I like to use the word calling. You know, if we've, if we've been called if we've been called out of darkness into the marvelous light, we got a calling. We got a calling on our life, whether we fulfill it or not. And a lot of times people know they are calling, but they won't do it because they scared somebody go say something or go laugh at them. You know, all of us can't do the same thing like everybody else. You know, we got our own way of doing things and our own style of doing things. You know, I can sing, but I can't sing like some of the rest of them. You know, I can pray, but I might not can pray like everybody else. And a lot of times we, we stop people from doing what they are called to do because the way we react. You know, and they take they take that in in uh as harmful. It's a setback, you know, and we need to stop doing that. You know, if somebody get up and say and they out of tune, you know, scripture say make a joy for no one. Yes, yes, it didn't say yes, sing in tune yes, and, and and sing on get every beat, you know. So we we just need to do better. Thank you for that, Mr. Carolyn. Just to say what um Sister Carolyn was saying, she's right. We we hinder people. We had we hinder people, and it's it's bad that we do. And we supposed to be Christians and saints and love everybody. We family. We God's children. When we say we just like our children. Our children is our children. We God's children. We sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles. We are God's children. All of us are one. And if we are one, we're supposed to hold each other up, but we study tearing each other down. We got to lift each other up. And like Aunt Carolyn was saying about Mama Shirley, <laughs> I was down. I was down. And I called her. That, see, that's my, that's my first call. Well, my first call is God. And then when I call on God, I called my second call. That's Mama Shirley. But I couldn't give because it was so late. But you're my, my third call. That's Gail. And I thank God for Gail. Because Gail got me back in Sunday school. Gail got me. Mama Shirley and Gail got me back in back, got me back out my bed and back in the church. And I thank God for it. You got to thank God for it. Because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It's the, it's the little things. I remember when I couldn't even get out of the bed. More or less for physical. Then it was after the physical did let me halfway get out of bed. The mental wouldn't let me get out of bed. I stayed in my room with the door shut in a big old house with the lock on the bedroom door. Ain't nobody in there to bother me. But I couldn't get out for fear. You know, you got you got you got people that lift you up. You got people that boost you up. Mama Shirley said, get out of that house. I want you to get out of that house. I need you to get back in church. She kept on, she kept on. And you know what them same words my grandma would have told me. Now you know better than this. You ain't brought up like this. I was here with them. But when I lost it, it looked like something went away. It just, it just like I, I was broken. And I lost my mind. <laughs> but God brought my mind back to my, I'm, I'm back to my senses now. And I got, I got my support system. And I thank God for them. Like you say, give them their flowers while they live. And I love them for them. And I thank God for them. And I thank God for my, for my cousin Jimmy. And I say my cousin, my brother Jimmy. 
because he encourages me. He encouraged me. And I said, you know, that made me feel so good. Because like you say, like Naomi say, you know, yeah, you was the life of the party. But I'm the life of the party. Him, this is my party now. This is my party out. You know, we're going to give God the glory right here. Even in Sunday school where it's supposed to be dull. No, it's supposed, this is the, this is the, uh, what you say, appetizer. Amen. This is the appetizer before we get to the main course. So we got to give God the glory even in Sunday school. Amen. We got to act like we on, on fire right here. You know, we got to start it off. So when Reverend Fight get up there, he ain't got much to do. Because we already done got it started. See, we his support system. We his support system. God got to, we got to give God the glory. We got to give God the glory through our own self, through our own testimony, through our own, I mean, show him, show our light. Let our light shine. I call it, Sister Carolyn call it one thing, but I call it vessels. He sent us vessels. He sent us vessels, vessels in our lives. He sent us vessels, boy. And I'm trying to tell you, them rams and them bushes, I love them, boy, because I'm trying to tell you, they help me. You don't think so? Ain't nobody seen me in a long time, but look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. I went through it. Now this morning, I was going through it this morning. But guess what? I said, look, I'm still, I'm here. I'm here. I'm tired. I had to pop some bills this morning, but I'm here. Hey, thank God I'm here. Glory, because you don't know. You don't know what I went through this morning trying to get here. You don't know. You don't know my story. See, that's why I give God the praise like I praise him now. Like I told, like I told Shadita this week. I said, when I, when I, when I, when you thought I would have saw God like I'm seeking him now, when I lost my mama, my grandma, my granddaddy, everybody at one time, that's when I, you would have thought I would have saw God then. When I lost my, 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 my ace in the hole, you would have thought I would have saw God then. No. Uh, I'm seeking him now. Yeah. Not because I ain't got nothing. Not because I'm sick. Because I've been sick before. I've been down with cancer. Stuff should have took me out of here. I'm seeking God. Not because I, I done found about the change. The change that done come over me. And I thank God. I thank God for all the people that's around me. I thank God for my Sunday school, Sunday school family. I thank God for my church family. I love y'all. I love y'all. Lord knows I love y'all. And we got to continue to let our life shine. We got to let our voices. We got to lift up our voices. Don't be ashamed. Be bold. Be bold. Now, I'm loud now. now I'm sorry. But, you know, God, I got to give God the glory. Because just as loud as I am in here, I be loud in my house by myself. So it ain't no show for nobody. It ain't no show. And if anybody know me, they know I'm loud. And when I start talking, I get passionate. And I can't stop. But I got to stop because I know it's Sunday school. It's right. it's you, you, right. you go ahead. It's all right. Now, the message today, it says the word says The word says Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. That Sister Lambert shared with us, you know, she's giving them a word. Yes, like you said, like Sister Carolyn said, a lot of times we judge people, we try to kill their spirit or whatever. Yes, 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 yes. Because in the end, it's going to be all about God anyway. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Neither one of us are not giving them a little to put nobody in. My God. My God. I'm judging no one. My God. My God. You know, and like I say, you know, just a word. Mm. Just a word. And I don't relate to what you're saying, because like I say, going to talk, we're going to give a, I'm sure I'm praising right now. Oh, yes. Because I remember oh, yes. going yes. through. Oh, my God. Just a, just a word. Oh, yes. I can say it. Oh, yes. Listen about a word. Oh, yes. Sometimes you can speak a word. Oh, yes. From the heart from God, and we can change the whole situation. Oh, yes, it can. Yes, it can. We can change the whole situation. And, and like I said, we're going to give show y'all flowers because that's the type of people we're supposed to be. Oh, yes. Y'all have y'all memories, but I have a memory too of her just speaking, of, just speaking a word to me. Oh, yes, no. Yes, no. I've been encouraging since I've been a child. You know, she's treated a certain kind of way since I've been a child. I don't remember yes, all that stuff. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Thank you. Thank you. So, like I said, you know, just. We supposed to be the image. Oh yes, yes. We supposed to be the image of God. He says the word is safe. Yeah. You know, and right now, you know, I know our kids. Uh, they're gonna be running our services more. I think they sing this morning. Right, I think our young people coming up. But I remember last Sunday, this young man right here. And I'm gonna call him up. Come up here, uh, little man right here. Come here, come here, school. Come here. I know this Sunday school, and I know 
then he started reforming from choir prayer to ask God to take control of this thing before I became here. So I just want to tell you to come here. Come here. Yes, God. The last Sunday, I had a conversation with this young man. Jesus. You know, he was in church and he was being a teenager. Just like I was a teenager one time. Oh, yes, God. Wasn't paying attention to what was going on. You know, not to beat him up for nothing, because I'm not here to do that. You know, I want to give him the, the love that God gives me. Oh, yes, God. Yes, you know, but I share with him. Yes, God. The young man, try to pay attention to what the word is saying. Oh, yes, God. Because just because you don't see it right now, mm. as you go through life, yes, God. Don't you hear what I'm saying? It's cool, because I know a lot of times the things are around, when you're around a bunch of darkness, you think that that's the way that things are supposed to be. But as you go through your life, God is going to continue to carry you. Yes, God. It won't be your friends. Mm. May not be mom and dad. Because you just heard your grandma talking about she lost her a long time ago. Mm. So you got to be able to depend on God. Yes. Know the word. Yes, Lord. Study the word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You don't know how to pray? I'm going to show you like mom can share with me. He said, just say, Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes, God. Yes, okay. God. Hold your yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, God. Listen, they're standing. I didn't bring him up here to try to shame him or nothing. But we supposed to love our kids. Yes, I don't know that. Yes, because if you look around the church, a lot of times our teenagers are gone. Yes, we don't know yes, Lord. So if we don't make a change, who gonna make the change? My God. I love you, man. Thanks for coming up here. Thank you, 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 we're going to try to move on down to our SK Park. Uh, do you have anybody want to sort of read the SK Park book? All right, as we as we hear in the word that she read, you know, Jesus wasn't intense about this. He said he almost streaked like a like a crow because he wanted he he wanted us to believe in him. You know, and I'm thinking after, after reading the word, you know, Nicodemus sometimes had his doubts, but then at, at the end, you know, he he believed. So, you know, this was a passion. This was this was Jesus he came to earth. He want he wanted us to believe in his father, believe in him. So I can imagine, you know, he was intense about why he, he wanted us to become believers. 
and to believe after him. All right? I'm going down to John 12, 48 through 50. It says, the rejection of the evidence of who Jesus was resulted in the events leading to the crucifixion. John pointed that out by quoting the beginning of Isaiah's description of suffering of the suffering servant. It is in the light that Jesus' words in our text about salvation and judgment must be understood. The assertion that Jesus was sent by the Father and given words to speak from the Father does not undermine the doctrine of the Trinity, but confirms it. This doctrine teaches that God is one in three persons that has separated duties and resulting positions. The fact that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity does not make him less than the Father, but rather defines their relationship. By obeying the Father's command, Jesus made eternal life physical and spiritual available to humanity. Jesus' faithfulness and following the command of his Heavenly Father gives opportunity for humanity to receive this life. The reception of this life starts with, starts with and requires belief that Jesus is the Son of God and the only way to the Father. It said, Jesus bear to, to all who believe. Belief in Jesus leads to spiritual cleansing and renewal. A person can't claim to be a disciple of Jesus and not obey him and his words. Disciples of Jesus live in him, and so they must live as Jesus did. That's powerful. You know, if you if you ever just really read John, and you have, might have to read a certain certain amount of time, but it says about Jesus hear the prayers of worshipers, you know, and he don't hear hear the prayers of lions, you know, or, or sinners. I, I think the word says sinners, but we have to be very careful. First of all, we got to know the word. We got to know who God is. We got to spend time in the word. We got to continuously pray. We got to continuously ask God for knowledge and understanding of his word. Because like I say, you know, a trick of the enemy is to distract us from what's most important. You know, um, and I like to just sort of just put things in everyday life. Well, for me, Sometimes reading the Bible, sometimes it can be hard to understand. You have to read it over and over again to get a clear understanding of it. But I shared a conversation with my nephew um, earlier today. He's been doing well. You know, me and him had a conversation. He called me. I guess since my mom passed, I sort of took the place of her with, with talking to him and encouraging him. But he was sharing with me. He said, oh, you know, I'm trying to do everything right. You know, and God just continues to bless me, man. He, you know, he's showing me he's been talking about miracle signs and wonders too. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that God gives us. But he was telling me how he was blessed. But he told me he was so blessed in some of the things that he was doing that he was afraid. You know what I'm saying? Lord, what is it? What's my purpose? What's going to happen to me? In his mind, he's thinking, what's going to happen to him? What, what's, what's going on? Because I'm being blessed and it's coming so fast, I don't know what to do. You know, my purpose is God going to take me away from you. So me trying to pray before I give him an answer, because like I said, I never want things to be a Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? I never want things to be a Jimmy response. Amen. I want it to be from the God. So what I shared with him, I said, you know, whether you leave here at 30, because he, I think he's 33 right now. I said, whether you leave here at 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. I said, what are we living for anyway? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We living yeah. to see God one day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you just continue just to keep your hands in God's hand. Oh, yeah. 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 And whatever it be, whatever God has for your life, you allow that to be what God has to be for your life. Because it talks in the word about when you do things the right way, it says that he'll provide things and plenty, running over. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, if you do the things that God wants you to do, he will bless you that way. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Miraculously. If he can take, we've been hearing it all our lives. Two fish, five rolls of bread, a hive and a hive of the and he can he bless you that way. But he can feed 5,000 men. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. When he can dig his hand in the mud, spin off, put in your eyes and be contact lenses where you can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It ain't nothing that God can't do. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Only thing we have to do is believe. Yes, sir. Believe in his word, and that's what Jesus is saying right now. He came, God sent his son to give us direction on, on how to believe. All the thing he asked us to do is believe. Yes, believe. Yes, believe. Just believe. Yes. 
and the things that we've been doing here in Sunday school, and, and you know, we're by, and like I say, it's the kids, and I don't want to leave out the kids because, you know, sometimes you look across the congregation, you don't see the, the, your children in church. Not only our church, but our church, there's so many different things that's going on. We got to find a way to reach them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We got to find a way to give it to them so they'll know who God is. And a lot of times, you know, the only God sometimes they see is us. Oh, yes. And how we carry ourselves. Or how we treat them. How we love them. Oh, yes. yes. You know, it says right here in the word that Jesus came to the world not to judge, but to save. But to save. Hallelujah. Jesus came to save. Oh, yes. And we got to save them. That's why I had a conversation with our younger men out in the community. Because I remember the older generation, they talked to me coming along. My uncles, my grandfather, the men of the church. Yes. Yes. And, and we got to get better. Yes. We got to get better because sometimes I had a conversation with a minister the other day in the barbershop getting my hair cut. Same thing. Sometimes we can become so closed-minded, so judgmental, that we don't want to step out of doing the, the norm. But we got to meet these kids where they are. Where they're TikToking or whatever they got going on in social media, we got to find a way to reach our younger generation. And like I say, every chance we get, we got to speak a word to them. Because the Sunday school lesson is about the word saves. So sometimes we're, we're the only thing that, that, they, that they hear is a word. And then like you say, sometimes people want to live in a uh, the only thing they know is darkness. You know, I, and it made so much sense. Uh, I like to watch the show called The Wire, and I think the guy, the actor name, I want to say his name is Lawrence Gilliard or something like that. But he was talking about growing up in this neighborhood where all he saw is darkness. And from that, but he wanted to get out of that. The only thing you see is murder and killing and things like, going, things like that going on. But he was wise enough to know that he wants something different out of his life. You know, and we should be like that. If all of us close our eyes right now, only thing we see is darkness. Now imagine opening your eyes and you still seeing darkness. Imagine that. You know, we supposed to be the light. We supposed to share God's word. We supposed to talk about when God brought us through, through different things. Because that's what he wants us to do. Oh, yes. We talked about purpose. Miss Caroline called it a calling. I say purpose, a calling. But God places in different moments of our life because he said that he knew us before we was even in our mother's womb. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, mom and dad might have gave us a name, but God got a name for us, too. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And I say this to say that, that purpose, our words, how we live, how we walk. Like I say, not saying that every day is going to be a good day, that we're going to do things. Because like you say, you go through sickness. You might go through financial struggles. But we've all made it through that in so many ways. And we have to continuously witness. Hey, Brother Jim, you know a lot of times we don't step out and do what we are supposed to do because we're afraid of being rejected. And you know, being rejected, it is a hurting thing. But Jesus was rejected. And he didn't stop. There ain't no reason for us to stop. You know, we got to do whatever the Lord tells us to do. And he speaks. He speaks all the time. We just have to be quiet enough to, to, to hear him. And, and got to be close enough to him to recognize his voice because he'll speak and the enemy will come right behind and speak. So we got to know, we got to know that we know. Oh, yeah. 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 And we got to stop being afraid of being rejected because that ain't nothing new. Like I said, Jesus was rejected, oh, but he kept going. And I say, thank God for Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Thank God for Jesus because she just reminded me, Jesus, when he came here on this earth, he was on a mission. Oh, yeah. He had things that he was trying to do. And I, uh, I forgot, uh, Brother Damien. Brother Damien, I thank God for Brother Damien. Um, we had the children's choir rehearsal on Tuesday. 
and it wasn't many children there, but Damien gave a talk that all parents, all grandparents, all aunts, uncles, children, everybody should have been here. It shouldn't have been just on the choir, it should have been in the whole church. Should have been there with all their children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, should have been there. And he gave a talk to these children. These children. See, that's what the, when you say you got uh, uh, vessels and, and, and uh, 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 called people that's called. You got called. We got called. Robinson got called people in the church that's called to do these things. But we ain't got people here to listen to them. That's why we got the we we, we got the we got the, the ones that's here. You know, like like if he say, um, call two or three people and and and, and tell them. And we tell them, they'll tell somebody else. And when they tell somebody else, they'll tell somebody else and bring them so they can hear. Because these children need to hear. They needed to hear what Damien said. And I thank God for what he said. And I pray that these children listened and took it in. Because that was a, it was a wonderful talk. Him and Sister Gail, they talked and, and I got it. I don't know if the children got it, but I got it. And it touched me. Because it made me think really hard and, and it put fear in me about my children in the streets. We don't want to lose them. And that's why we're trying to get the word into them. And we can't get the word into them if they don't know the word. And they got to know the word if they got to go to the Bible. And they got to go to the Bible. If they can't go to the Bible, they got to go to church. And that way they got to go to church, they got to listen. Some kind of way we got to get the word into them. If they don't want to listen, to, if they don't want to read, Somebody got to get the word into these children. And I'm trying to tell you, and I know they're tired of me. Because I'm trying to sit here and tell you. I walk around that house, and I'm trying to, like my son to say, you two things mama don't play about. And mama don't play about church, and she don't play about her money. And mama ain't got no money, so she ain't playing about church. Amen, Sister Williams. Anybody else got anything they would like to add to, add to that? Before we move on, all right, we're going to get on down into the elevate part. And it says, in, in developing a personal relationship with Jesus, what roles does a shit studying and accepting the word of Jesus play in one's life? All right, it says, in developing a personal relationship with Jesus, what role does a shit studying and accepting the word of Jesus play in one's life? I'm just going to touch on that real quick because I know we're moving on towards service. Uh, but just for you to know the word that you got to study the word. And it's basically what she just said. You know, if we're not having our children come out here. Because um, I remember coming out and we went to Sunday school. Sister Caroline, I think Sister Car Caroline and Sister Caroline taught the kids Sunday school when we was young. But I remember going through that in church and getting that word instilled in us. So. Just like Sister Robin is doing right now, she's bringing her grandkids. They're coming out to the churches and tell me, God, our youth, our youth in church, you know, we got to find a way to give them the word. Because back to our, our topic, the word saves. The word saves. So when, when you are alone going through, when you go through your sickness, when you, when you go through this hardship and, and different things in your marriages or your kids acting up and things are just not going right. Mom and daddy might not be there. Aunts and uncles might not be there. But you have the word. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have the word. And the word saves. Yes, and I think, you know, that's why God, well, I know that's why God sent Jesus here. Oh, yeah. He comes to this, this sense place. You know, where, where things are constantly going on. All type of trouble going on around us. But you have to know the word. Because again, the word saves. I pray that we got a lot out of the Sunday school. Like I said, I thank God for just being in the midst of it. I thank God also for our church family. Amen. For being raised how I was raised Boy, from my family. Yeah. You know, uh, and I'm just gonna touch on this. I remember my 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 child coming to me crying one day. My baby girl, I always talk about testing me and her talk. Our relationship sort of strange. I thought, oh, maybe because we so much alike. But I remember her coming to me and she was crying. One day, and this thing broke my heart because I'm like, why is my baby crying? And she said, Daddy, she said, I want to thank y'all for being good people. I want to thank grandma, 
Rosa Mae Waddell, uh, Diane, all y'all, because I think she's working at a car lot. But anyway, people was buying a car, it made her life easy. But she seen that, you know, by you having a good lineage or coming from good people, how you can be blessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how we're supposed to be with Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're supposed to be images. Yeah. Do the things that, that, that he wants us to do. Try to live more by your spirit instead of this flesh. Try to, try to tap into that, that spiritual side of it. That when you can sense when somebody's going wrong, you can just speak a word. Oh, yes. Because you, you never know how much a word can just change somebody's life. We talk about purpose, we talk about calling, but just being the tone of your spirit where you can just help somebody. Yeah. You know, help somebody. We got members right now that's been home in church. Because Ann Davis, a woman that I love to death, you know, she she know the word. Yeah. Just God. speak a word, yes, it's gonna God. be okay. Yes, God. Regardless of what you go through. God is going to be with you. He's already covered all that we can ever go through. Oh, yes. Yes, Only thing we got to do is try to be his light, to change, to be a light for the people that's in darkness so they can come to Christ. Because there ain't nothing better than living for the Lord. Nothing better. All right. Yes, that's just good. All right. Well, I'm going to go on and close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once more again, God. Just thank you right now, God. Thank you right now, God, for your word, God. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, here, Lord, on the earth, Father God, just to deliver us from our sins, God. God, in your word, he said he just wants us to believe, God. God, touch our young people's mind right now, God. God, allow them to know, Father God, if it's nothing else, Father God, they will always have you, Lord. God, continue just to be with them right now, God, as they transition, Father God, to almost getting ready to go back to school, Father God, just put a protective hedge around them, Lord. God, allow me to know, Father God, that you are the way, Father God. And it says if, if you are lifted up, Father God, that you will draw all men unto you, God. And right now, God, we just want to say thank you right now. God, God as we move into the service, Father God, ask you, Father God, to be with my pastor, Father God, and his family, Father God. Continue just to give him the strength, Father God, that he may be weak, Father God. So, Father God, just to build him up, Father God. That he will be the man of God that you have him to be, God. Yes, God. And God, yes, God. just be around our congregation, Father God. Yes. Someone that may be home right now, God. Somebody that might be going through, God. Yes. Allow them to know, Father God, that you are the way, Father God. And Father yes, God, through God. you, yes, that anything is possible, God. Yes, God. And God, we just want to continue, Father God, just to bless each and every one of us, God. Allow us, Father God, to walk in the way you have us to walk, Father God. Talk in the way that you have us to talk, Father God. Move in the way that you have us to move. God, because it's all about you, Father God, and not about us, Father God. I allow you to increase, Father God, and us to decrease Ooh, in this world, God. And God, we just want to say thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. These are the blessings and in your holy son, Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Amen. Amen. Just stand up. Sunday school closing. Sunday school is over for another day. Here's Heavenly Father. Ask us we pray. Through the week, be with us in our work and in our place. Make us kind and loving and help us to obey. What would Sunday school be if every scholar was just like me?